Welcome to Pop Culture Legends, a mini series from Digital Dissection, a nerd podcast. Pop Culture Legends explores the spaces in between mainstream and esoteric across the world of media. There's a lot to unbox across our favorite properties, and some aren't always well known. We hope you enjoy the spaces in between those spaces. Today's legend explores the inspirations of Fatal Frame, the hit Japanese survival horror game. Since 2001, the series has been popular for terrifying gamers as they are tasked with exploring supernatural events and the spirits responsible for them. What many didn't know about Fatal Frame, however, was that the setting of the first entry in this series has real-world influences. But what secret truly lies within it? Join us as we explore the claims of the series' creators and what we know about the story of the game. Survival horror is a subgenre of video games that has existed for the better part of the last 30 years. In terms of inspiration, it's quite a deep well of subject matter, as its topics range anywhere from zombies to aliens, and sometimes the supernatural. Fatal Frame by Tecmo is a video game series that definitely fits into the latter, an original concept that explores exterminating ghosts with an antique camera. Fatal Frame debuted in 2001, with its events taking place in the year 1986. It follows the experiences of two siblings named Miku and Mifuyu Hinasaki. The Hinasakis are unique in that they have a rare gift with an ability to witness the supernatural. The game's events kick off when Mifuyu goes missing, shortly after his tutor, Junsei Takamine vanishes on a research expedition to the supposedly haunted Himuro Mansion. Miku then sets out to determine the fate of her brother, and the many who disappeared investigating the location. Miku quickly discovers that not only is Himuro Mansion haunted, but that the site had an incredibly dark secret. The mansion itself contained a gateway to hell, and ritual sacrifices were carried out in order to keep the gates sealed. Future generations, however, would not continue the burden needed to keep the gates shut, and in turn, the malice within the gate had begun to seep out. Fatal Frame would be terrifying enough on its own, as its imagery, story, and overall experience inspired nightmares. What made the events of the game truly horrific wasn't necessarily the eventual plot of the mysteries at Himuro Mansion. It was a message that greeted players before they even pressed start. On the game's title screen, a very specific line appears, based on a true story. In 2001, it may not have been as easy to hop on the internet and dig into what the claim actually meant, and many gamers as a result thought nothing of it. In the years that followed, however, curious truth seekers began asking questions about what the game's events could mean based on its details. After all, there are claims of a haunted mansion existing just outside Tokyo, seven unsolved murders, and specifically detailed ways to strangle people. If this were based on something, surely there would be adjacent stories and ways to make sense of it. As luck would have it, there was a specific reference available directly from the game's creator, Mikoto Shibata. For the North America release of the game, he would go on to elaborate about the Himuro Mansion in a press release. Quote, In an area outside Tokyo, there lies a mansion in which it said seven people were murdered in a grisly manner. On the same property, there lies three detached residences that surround the mansion, all of which are rumored to have ties to the mansion's troubled past. It's said there is an underground network of tunnels that lay beneath the premises, but nobody knows who made these tunnels or what purpose they served." Unquote. Almost every country has a well-known ghost story, and Japan having lore of its own didn't seem to be that far-fetched. A statement from Shibata, however, would go on to be far more specific as the mansion also featured unexplained bloody handprints, dead investigators who sought out the mysteries of the location, and a curse that would haunt anyone living near the area. 
For its merits, the statement from Shibata went on to essentially match many elements of Fatal Frame itself, except written as real events that occurred at an undisclosed time. Naturally, this got people talking, amongst fans, investigators, and media that wanted to understand more about these claims. In the years that followed, Fatal Frame would earn several sequels and grow in popularity. The questions, however, surrounding the claim of the first game's events being based on a true story persisted. But the difference now was that photos began circulating from those who claimed to have found it. Amongst the photos included the Himuro Mansion from the outside, a few of its interior rooms, and specifically, the Narukami Shrine. Fans of the game are naturally familiar with this site, but to those who have never played it, this is one of the several shrines scattered amongst the Himuro Mountains, a Fatal Frame setting. Did researchers do it? Did they actually find the deeply haunted and possible site of human sacrifices? Author and YouTuber Mary Hallberg is one of the people interested in finding out exactly whether or not the claims were true. Hallberg specifically sought out any information she could find on the Himuro Mansion, including nailing down the time periods of the claims online communities were making, as well as the associated details they were speculating upon. What she found out was that many had claimed the Himuro murders occurred early in the 1900s, but many resources seemed to point towards the same information. The supposed murders took place within 80 years of Fatal Frame being published, and the majority of resources were coincidentally pointing towards anecdotal evidence. In Hallberg's 2019 article on the topic of Himuro Mansion, the closest thing she could tie a potential reference to was the doomsday cult of Om Shunrikyo. The group committed acts of domestic terrorism, but they are not known for any human sacrifices or religiously influenced murders. Hallberg would not be the only one hitting her head against the wall looking for answers. They're simply not out there. The difference between this pop culture legend and others that have been proven fictional is that this one seems to have an origin that many still believe. Today's internet is very familiar with creepypasta content and stories rooted in just enough fact to be believable. But the Himuro Mansion is different for a few reasons. Consider for a moment, the year that Fatal Frame first came out, it was 2001 and moviegoers had just been subjected to the Blair Witch Project. If you're unfamiliar with the film, it was the first of many found footage films that would hit mainstream Hollywood. Its original appeal was founded in the idea that the film was discovered, showing the plight of a group of campers tormented by a malevolent spirit. The film was terrifying, but the factor of not knowing how to verify its authenticity as fictional or not was easily its most compelling plot device. The internet at that point in time was also the Wild West which we alluded to previously on our episode concerning the supposed time traveler John Teeter. It was all too easy to make a claim with few resources to actually verify it with. And Fatal Frame's possible real-life influences began their earliest days in this environment. What might be easier to do is instead focus back on the source of truth that many referred to in their story building of the Himuro Mansion. It's worth looking closer at Makoto Shibata's press release. Like any good ghost story, Shibata's press release details facts that should be verifiable to some extent. However, as time went on, none of it could be truly found, and the reasoning became quite easy to piece together. For example, those who put the Japanese version of the game called Project Zero in Asian markets, right away began telling online forums that the previously mentioned based on a true story never appeared in their title screens. 
the jarring line only began appearing in the U.S. release of Fatal Frame. And the press release by Shibata also only accompanied the U.S. press tour. Since these claims didn't exist before the game left Japan, it had to be a deliberate choice by the game's producers. But what are the photos taken of Himoto Mansion? Well, these are a little bit easier to explain. Many online forums have speculated over the possible location, and alongside Wikipedia-like resources, photos have begun circulating ever since the release of the game. Websites like jref.com have stories involving supposed Himoto family members as early as 2004, and the Fatal Frame fandom community circulates photos classified under real-life references. However, if one pokes around these sites, even they include the words conspiracy in their URLs, despite not being clear on their origins. What has become far more accepted throughout the years is that the true story of Fatal Frame really comes from the experiences that Shibata has shared with many media outlets during his career. As a child, Shibata has referenced numerous times that he thought he bore witness to a parade of spirits. During this stage in his life, his father had also gifted him an antique camera. And the long-running idea Shibata held was the concept of capturing the parade by taking pictures of them. Shibata would go on to further explain the supernatural event on Tecmo's official site. Quote, My parents' house is right on the bend of a long, open country road. Often I would wake inside my futon in the middle of the night, and there would be hundreds of presences coming down the road. In hushed, whispering voices, they would say things that I couldn't catch, slowly walking along, filling the width of the road. The first thing I thought when I received a half-broken camera from my father was, what would happen if I used this to take a photo of the procession without directly looking at it? Even if I didn't look myself, the moment I took the photo, would those presences flood towards me? Unquote. Ultimately, it would seem that Shibata's imagination and the idea of creating a viral moment were enough to kick off a marketing campaign. Over 20 years later, no one has found the real location of any Homura mansion outside Tokyo. While the legend itself is compelling and entertaining, it's very likely a well-constructed hoax. And with that, we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Pop Culture Legends, a digital dissection miniseries. Be on the lookout for future episodes as we explore the relative unknown as some of pop culture's stories lie just outside mainstream periphery. If you like this short story, why not like, subscribe, and comment as part of the digital dissection community. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as our dynamic content on YouTube. Tell us what you think. We'd love to hear from you at digitaldissectionpodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, Keep on dissecting. And if you do happen to locate the Himuro Mansion, it's probably best to just keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs>